May Council President Hines call the March 29th Special Council Study Session to order. Due to the Governor's Proclamation 20-28 relating to the COVID-19 emergency and open public meetings, this meeting will be held entirely remotely. There are multiple public comment opportunities at tonight's meeting. There is a general public comment opportunity at the beginning of the meeting, or you can make comments after the presentation and council question and answer period on tonight's agenda item. And I will also share a summary of any comments that have been emailed regarding tonight's agenda items. I will now take a roll call of the council members in attendance and please say here when I call your name. Council Member DeMichelle? Here. Thank you, Council, um, council Member Hall? Here. Thanks, Council Member Martz? Here. Thank you, Deputy Council President Ray? Here. Thank you, and Council Member Walsh? Here. Thank you, and Council Member Goodman had another meeting, and so she may be joining a few minutes late this evening, but she expects to be here shortly. The first item on the agenda is public comment, and if there is anyone on the call now who would like to make a public comment but did not sign up to speak, please raise your virtual hand. Um, Clerk Geezer, is anybody on the line that uh, looks like they might be interested in making a public comment? No, no one signed up in advance, and I also don't see any members of the public on the call at this time. Okay, thank you. Um, and as a reminder, written comments can be submitted at any time to citycouncil at issaquawa.gov. Um, and at this point, I will summarize email comments that we received on our items this evening, our, our one agenda item this evening. We received two emails from community members on tonight's agenda topics. One, um, community member who emailed us expressed concern about um, if there were too many piecemeal items that would be put forward by uh, council and indicated as well that one council member or one city administrator or mayor alone should not be able to initiate a, a project. So this was in response to our topic this evening around how council might advance a agenda item. Uh, then we had another email from a community member that commented on mul multiple um, parts of our agenda this evening. And this community member liked the idea of the ability for council to set agenda and agenda bills rather than um, reacting to what the administrative branch put forward, thought it should be, that this should be able to be done by one city council member without a motion and a second, I think just with one motion. Then also made comments um, regarding the item that is up for discussion this evening around when council directs items to commissions or has questions for commissions um, and did indicate that this community member thought there's the material should be more instructive on what's being asked um, and then had some additional comments on other items including on the um, on the fund balance policy indicating other topics that might be considered within that future conversation. That summarizes the email, uh, the two emails that we received from community members on tonight's agenda items. So with that, we will move to our first agenda topic, which is ID 0816, City Council Rules of Procedure. And um, I think because we do have another public comment and for the flow of the conversation if we can have um, questions or an overview of the materials and then we can um, go through questions and then we can have deliberations going point by point through the five items that are in the packet for this evening. I think that might be good. So, um, City Administrator Bob, Bob Kowitz, uh, did you want to start us off with agenda bill developments. Did you have any comments that you um, could share with the city on that topic? Item number one, council president, is that the one you're referring to in the packet? Yes, that's the one. And I'll, I'll, I'll also for context say that these are all items that um, we identified during the retreat that we thought um, fall under a broader umbrella of rules of procedure, but that we might consider as a council ways to address um, 
concerns that were voiced by council during our exercises at the retreat around rules of procedure and we can go forward with potential changes or if council has um, potential recommendations that weren't covered then that would be a good time to talk through those as well but this is all um, rules of procedure potential changes in response to the concerns that we heard at the retreat a uh, few months or a month or so ago Great, thank you, Council President, members of the Council, good evening. Um, item one, uh, the Council leadership asked the administration to conduct a survey of local communities with the Mayor Council form of government to determine how those communities allow members of the Council to add items uh, for consideration for future Council agendas. And you'll see uh, in your packet um, a, uh, on page 11 uh, a table that was prepared by the City Clerk's Office, which includes Redmond, Renton, Kent, SeaTac, and North Bend and how uh, those communities uh, operate as far as uh, allowing council members to add items to an agenda. Um, I've also uh, mentioned through the discussions with council leadership uh, a process that I was familiar with in my years in Evanston, Illinois, uh, where there was a standing item on every council meeting agenda, and if a council member wished to uh, put forward an item for future discussion, they could make a motion and have that motion seconded, and then the staff would come back at a future meeting with additional information before that item uh, was, additional work was done on that item. Um, and then uh, a question for consideration about the complexity of the topic affect the process. Uh, in my experience in working with city councils over uh, my career, uh, the items that come before council and individual council members wish to talk about uh, run of all uh, size and shape. And so uh, I think another issue for consideration is just you create a process that's bigger than the request. Um, and sometimes that can occur. I think there's a, an appropriate sensitivity um, to council workload, or excuse me, staff workload created by these council requests. And on behalf of your staff, I'll say thank you uh, for that concern. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we want to make sure that the council uh, discusses items uh, that are of importance to it. So, um, you know, I think from the administration standpoint, while we're, we're certainly protective of staff's time, we also understand uh, it's important for the council to have items uh, that they feel are important. Uh, the, current, the council's current rules has provisions. I think every community I'm familiar with and have worked in over the years has provisions. They're all slightly different and I think really evolve around, you know, what the culture of the council has been over time, um, you know, and really to provide a process that everybody understands and everybody feels fair. So I don't think there's any one process that makes sense. I think it's the process that you're most comfortable with. So we have a lot of information uh, that, that we have provided and council president, certainly I'm here to answer any questions. Uh, the city clerk and the deputy city clerk are also on the call this evening and they're here as well. Thank you, city administrator Bobquitz. We do have some questions. Um, council member Hall has a question. Thank you, council president Hunt. Uh, this is council member Hall. I have a, just two questions for the city administrator. Um, the first is you described a, um, a process that you're familiar with back in Illinois, where in, during go to the order, you would bring up an issue you'd like to come back at a future meeting, get a second, and then um, city staff would come back with additional information before more work was done on that. What kind of information is brought forward? Is that kind of like a resource? Um, rundown, so to speak, so staff would say how much time it would take to go through something like that and um, if the work plan needs to be changed or anything like that, or did they come back right away with the agenda bill? Sorry, that could have you been know, it, better. <laughs> it, 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 it varied depending again on the size of the request. Um, oftentimes a request that was known to one or two council members was not known to the rest of the council and so you know, staff would either get information from the requesting council member or do their own research uh, and provide additional information about that so the full council at least had some context as to mm -hmm. what was, was, was being asked and requested. Uh, and then really it just depended on what was being asked. If it was an ordinance, um, you know, I think that the general parameters were discussed, the additional work that would be required was discussed. There was no one size that really fit all of those requests. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think normally when it came back to the council, in my experience, either there was, you know, general support or general opposition, or there wasn't usually a lot of hemming and hawing. I think that, uh, you know, people knew 
if it made sense or didn't make sense with usually a little bit more information. And I think first and foremost, uh, people just wanted to be familiar with the topic. And when someone brings something forward, you know, sometimes you're not familiar with the topic. So once people had an opportunity to understand, you know, the parameters of what was being requested, perhaps talk with a, a council member or two, the, the proposer, for example, and getting more information. In, in my experience, usually things fell, fell into place and the staff, you know, either came back at the next meeting or came back a month later. Um, even if the work wasn't completely done, you know, usually then there was at least a check-in. Um, but in my experience, if there was a consensus uh, after that, that initial full discussion to move forward, you know, it's always seemed to work itself out. Okay. That's very interesting. Um, and then my second question um, is just on page 11, this table that, uh, this great table that was put together for us, wondering if um, we, are, we were able to hear back from Redmond. I know we hadn't had a response by the 25th. Just wondering if we were able to hear back by now. And I'll ask the city clerk, who I think is on the line, if she's, or the deputy city clerk. Yeah, thank you. Um, they had some staffing issues out last week, so no, we, did, we, we haven't received any updates yet, but we'll share it. Okay, thank you. Are there any additional questions on this first item, which is um, regarding amendments to the agenda setting section of the rules of procedure? Not seeing any questions. Okay, um, so the next item in within this agenda item is around, oh, I'm sorry, Councilmember Walsh has a question. Thanks, sorry. Is there gonna be a presentation or are we just kind of going through it? There isn't a, a presentation, but I do believe we could show if it helps and it might help, um, we could show the agenda packet so you could read the language um, of each part that we're on. Would that be possible, Clerk Geezer, to um, put the agenda packet wording up? Assuming Councilmember Walsh, that would that that would help. Yeah, I'm just trying to understand where we should whether we should wait for questions or whether we're going section by section, et cetera. Okay. Um, so from my perspective, since this is a retreat follow up, it is more um, based on what we identified as issues during the retreat. So uh, that's kind of the structure that it follows. And we can either I was thinking we could go section by section for questions and then um, because we have this public comment separated that way, call for public comment in case anybody came on the line and then go to the deliberations again, section by section, so we can have a consensus um, recommendation or a consensus opinion come out of those discussions for each item. So that would be my proposed way of going through, through it. Okay, so I see a thumbs up. Um, I do think it's probably helpful to have the wording on the screen, if that's possible. Um, this and is then, Tisha, I can pull that up. Thank you. Uh, and then Council Member D. Michelle has a question. Thanks, and thanks for that clarification because uh, it's sort of a question and sort of a comment. So um, I was wondering, uh, perhaps City Administrator Balquist can can talk to this. Has Is there a um, another option which would be city council members uh, proposing items to council leadership and having those vetted at the leadership meeting. Um, I'm just I'm just throwing that out as another possibility. Have you had any experience with that uh, model or is that not a viable one? Again, I, I, there is no such thing as a non-viable one. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I guess, uh, I will offer the, the the experience that no one likes surprises, and so the more the more you can do this as the full group, the better. Because even with going to council leadership, then you're only talking with three, depending on how it's broached. If an individual council member raises it at a particular meeting, and there's two or three other council members there, um, you know, then that's four, and then then all of a sudden you're encountering potential open meeting issues about about it so um I, you know my, my experience is it, lay it out for everybody to hear however you do it however many votes it may take to move it forward that's 
there's there's lots of ways to do that. But again, this is trying to get everyone to buy in. The, the, yes, this is something you want to talk about, or no, it isn't something you want to talk about. Thanks. Great, thank you. Okay. Um, Council, do we have any further questions on this section one or can we move to section two? One minute, one few seconds. Okay, I think we're done with questions for section one. So I think we can move to section two. Thank you. Okay, um, so during the retreat, we heard some concerns about uh, clarity of process or um, ambiguity of, of process around study sessions in particular in the AB development um, and the role of study sessions. Um, so in discussing this at leadership, we thought that one way we could improve the clarity potentially would be on um, having something like a liaison, that might not be the right word, but something, um, some sort of uh, council member that would be identified that would um, form a opinion as to the next step of whether this should come back to council at a study session, for example, or it's it's um, there's a clear AB that would come out of the discussion and then it can go to a AB that would be decided at the full council, for example. And we also identified that um, we thought this was partially a result of moving to the study sessions where we don't have a um, we don't have a committee chair like we formerly had in committees who is oftentimes the sort of liaison for a bill and would be the one to speak to it at council and would be, um, and you would also have a vote coming out of the committee that would be the guidance for council at the full committee on an agenda bill that had gone through that process. Um, so we uh, identified a few suggestions for this one and those are below, I think, if we scroll down a little bit and um, those suggestions would be around basically having somebody identified. And I think there's sort of two er, two kinds of person that could be identified. It could either be something on a, a theme basis or it could be the chair of the meeting. So that would be more random because we do have a random or a um, rotating chair of the meetings. And I see that there's Council Member Walsh has a question. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure I understand what problem this solves. I know it somewhat mirrors the concept that we had when we were using committees, but can you talk through again what the problem is associated with the solution? Yes, and, and also I will also say that these were some of the suggestions that came out of leadership's discussion, but potentially there are other ways to adjust the problem. So the problem here is around um, ambiguity of AB development processes. And um, for example, when is something um, baked enough to go to the next phase? Um, how does council fit into that process of the AB development? And um, would it help to have somebody who in the study session is the one who, um, or in the development of that AB is the one who would be uh, able to would be sort of closest to the bill like a liaison or like a chair of the committee was previously. Okay, um, do you want thoughts now or just questions? Um, I think we'll do, if it's okay, I think we'll try to do questions and then we'll come back for all the thoughts in order so I can Thanks. make summaries, okay. Okay. Any further questions on this one? And um, Clerk Geezer, I think we can scroll down a little bit. Oh, thanks. Oh, and Council Member Martz, would you like to? Thank you, um, Council thank you. President. I, I apologize. I, I, I don't have the problem with my mute, but I have the problem with sending a comment that I thought I sent to everyone that, in fact, I just sent to the clerk, which is not helpful. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I was um, the question about liaisons. 
um, goes back to um, when I was council president. And actually, we worked out a definition of a liaison, and that's um, that that definition is still out there, but we didn't uh, we didn't get around to adopting it. Um, and it was really around this idea of head scratcher moments, right? Um, the idea was that any bill that was coming before council should have some council member who is uh, uh, has a vested interest in resolving it. And it was because we had we had had a couple of bills, and I'm thinking here uh, about the original uh, Chell site bill. Uh, that came to us that did not have any council support, and we didn't really know why it was showing up, and uh, that was awkward, and it was in an evening when we had our, our storied seven-hour and 45-minute council meeting, uh, so it was part of that. Council member DeMichelle was there in the audience. Uh, so, but also things like potential amendments uh, on bills. You know, we have times when there's late-breaking amendments, or questions that can come from the dais. And so, you know, the idea is really to try to minimize head scratcher moments where we're, the seven of us are sitting up there saying, uh, what are we supposed to be doing? And, or, uh, you know, somebody's got an amendment and they have to write it in crayon or whatever. Um, so I had, I had been a big proponent and continue to believe that Bill should have a liaison that's not necessarily an advocate, but a point of contact that's, that's on the council side, even though we no longer have committees. Uh, it's still, uh, it's very important to me that we minimize head scratcher moments. Um, and I think this could be a tool for that. I, sorry, I'm, I guess I'm blending into advocacy. Sorry. Uh, but I did want to try to answer your question. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Martz. I think that history was really helpful. Okay. I'm not seeing any other questions on this one, so we'll move to the third one, which is study sessions. Um, this is, again, suggestions to reduce the ambiguity of the AB development process and the role of study sessions in that process and the role of council and study sessions within that process. Um, so on this one, um, this was, this was, I believe, the uh, when we did the retreat, there was a post-it um, around AB ambiguity. I think that was the one that had the most um, concern when we were identifying concerns. So we had a couple different, um, we identified a couple different potential ways to uh, amend our rules of procedure for that one. So this, this is around um, setting expectations for the, uh, how many touches, for example, an AB would have in the council study session or how to determine if it should have another uh, touch with council in the study session format before it comes back to council for a vote in the AB format. Um, and then uh, also a suggestion around formalizing what I think we've started doing, which is around uh, that the chair would summarize the direction um, of the conversation after a study session item and then give the opportunity for council to correct or to amend the consensus. Um, and I think as over time, that would, um, that would clarify the intent of council. So that's why that's a suggestion for that. And again, um, these were our suggestions, but there might be other ones. I'll see if there's any questions on this one. seeing any questions on this one, so I think we can go to the next one, which is number four. And this one is around um, reducing ambiguity when council, when the next step after a study session, after an AB is discussed in a study session would be for it to go to one of our boards or commissions. And this would be around um, uh, codifying questions that council would formulate questions for the commission or the board if there are specific things that we would like feedback on. Um, so this would try to reduce some of the ambiguity when things go from council to a commission. Councilmember Hall. Uh, thanks. This is Councilmember Hall. Just a quick clarifying question. So that um, these questions um, that we would put together, the idea would be behind it would be um, 
this would be like the initial guiding questions in particular where of interest on council but as a board of commission you obviously can ask any questions you want and get any information you want that you think will help inform our decision is that correct um yes so i think that's correct on the suggestion and i i would add i was also thinking of this as similar or even part of the summary that um council the chair would do they would you know make sure to uh agree on wording of any specific questions that came out of the discussion that would go to a board or commission if council had specific questions so it's i think in my in my mind anyway it was part of that summarization that the chair would do for an ab um, and i see that council member goodman has joined us so welcome and um i see also that council member goodman has a question uh thank you council member goodman here so on the um Council may choose to post questions for board commission consideration. Um, so this is at a really high level and my concern is, um, is around details um, and how this is actually used. So um, I, I guess my question is when do we expect to pro be providing questions for boards and commissions um, and I can elaborate on my or I can wait for the answer because I do have a concern about it and and what question what and what are we is it to reduce ambigu ambiguities for when things go to boards and commissions I'm just not quite sure what for is trying to accomplish and when we would use it Thanks. I, I'll speak to um, my intent since I wrote it, this, and then if there's um, comments from the administration, from City Administrator Bob Quitz, that would be great too. Uh, so from my perspective, this was around um, ambiguity when council has um, indicated that it, when the next step is for a agenda bill or a um, agenda bill concept in development, that it would go to a board or commission to include any specific questions or specific things that we want, um, that we as a council would want that board or commission to uh, give us feedback on and potentially um, to incorporate that in our rules of procedure that we would identify those or that the chair of the meeting would identify those things. Um, so it is around reducing ambiguity. And I think it would be part of the summary. So that summary itself would be situation specific because some ABs don't also don't go to our boards and commissions. Um, I don't know if city administrator Bob Quitz has anything to add on that from, a, from the administration's perspective. Not hearing anything. So, um, okay. And then, and are, then we, no, no. are we providing feedback at the end of all these? Um, yes. Uh, so, Councilmember Goodman, because we have a, um, we did have a public comment period indicated on the agenda. So, I wanted to try to do that after we did the questions. So, I'm um, trying to separate the questions and then we'll do the deliberation on the items after that. Thanks. Okay. Um, Deputy Council President Ray would like to introduce number five. Number five. Yeah. Since uh, thank you, Council President Hunt. This is Chris Ray. Since I, I am I am prominently uh, identified in the uh, in the suggestion, I thought I would introduce the topic. And so, if you do read through the rules and procedures, there are a number of instances where the, the uh, logical operand is and slash or. Um, one of them is the and I'm not reading it, so I might get it wrong, but I believe it is the mayor and or council president may uh, put a agenda, an item on the agenda. And those are two very different, um, two different, very, very different things. And and would say they would have to both say yes for it to go on. And or would say that either one of them independently could um, add them to it. So so the rules, um, because we use the and or create some, in my mind, some ambiguity. And I would like us to take a look at that as, as we move forward. Thank you. Um, and 
This is Council President Hans. I will just add that this was something that came up when we last looked at our rules of procedure, but we didn't um, we didn't clarify all of those and ors. So this is also partly something that we looked at a uh, couple years ago now, um, and I think it's a remaining work item to to just provide that clarity. Okay. Um, don't see any questions on this one. The other, the last section, which is the un, which is not numbered, is around other items for future city council discussion. And these are things that have come up either at the retreat or around the retreat. Um, things that would be potential retreat type topics for discussion. And I indicate them here mostly um, to make sure that we aren't losing sight of them, or to indicate that we aren't losing sight of these these um, items and that we do still have them on our uh, radar for future work, um, but wanted to take this one step at a time and be responsive to especially the rules of procedure um, areas of concern, which I thought we could address as one item of, of this evening. Councilmember Hall has a question. Uh, yeah, thanks, Council President. This is Councilmember Hall. Um, I have a question on the other items. Is now appropriate time for that? Mm -hmm. um, one of them was number of reading of ordinances. Does City Council wish to set a standard for this hall, August 30, 2020? I'm sure my question was brilliant and um, very informative, but I have no idea what I was talking about there. So. <laughs> If someone could elaborate, that would be helpful for me. <laughs> uh, council Member Hall, members of the council, let me give a try, and I know the city clerks are on the line as well. Uh, there was an item that the council was considering, which was an ordinance. I think there was a concern at the time why it was only getting one touch instead of two touches. Uh, and I think at that point, there was the discussion that under Washington state law, uh, ordinances only uh, have to have one reading or one one touch, one uh, consideration. Uh, in many communities uh, in Washington State by local ordinance and elsewhere, uh, they require two readings, so it would be introduced at one meeting and adopted at a second meeting. Um, mm -hmm. Under Washington State law, that's not required, uh, but many communities apparently have. Actually, MRSC just in the last week or so did an article on this very topic on ordinances receiving first and second readings. So, um, it's it's a it's a it's a transparency issue. Again, something that upon my arrival in Issaquah was surprised there was only one reading. And, and speaking with the clerks, they had worked in other communities where there had been two readings. There just has never been that in uh, Issaquah. So you raised the question. Uh, I think the clerks and I knew that this was a larger issue, and so we took it down. And if the council cares to talk about it, we can talk about it more someday. All right. Thanks for refreshing my memory. Great, thank you. Council Member D. Michelle. Uh, is it appropriate to ask a question about the relationship with nonprofits that was listed under other? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what, uh, you know, we have several relationships with nonprofits. I'm wondering, is the focus on our, our financial relationships or our governance relationships or our partnerships on projects or, or all of those things? Um, could you just elaborate more on what we're going to discuss under that topic? Uh, I, I certainly can, Council President. Um, I, I think uh, Council Member DeMichelle kind of summarized it. We have lots of different relationships. Uh, sometimes the Council scrutinizes those relationships more carefully with some than some organizations than others. And so I think some there's been some concern that should there be a uniformity in that scrutiny. Um, we give the money everybody fair game about everything they do um, or not or is it just focused on the, the service in which they're being funded so I'd rather not get into all the specific examples that I've seen over the last several months but I think that there's just a concern about uniformity and consistency and I think that's what put the item on the on the list okay thank you great thank you not seeing any further questions um so and we can ask questions as well after the 
after the comment period. Um, Clerk Kieser, is anybody on the line or indicating that they would wish to make a comment for public comment at this time? I do see that we have one member of the public on the line. So I'll ask um, if you're interested in making comments tonight, if you would raise your hand by pressing star three. That's star three, if you're interested in making verbal comments. Just pause a moment here to see if they'd like to speak. Okay, and while, while they do that, I can also just quickly go through the rules. Um, for public comment. When recognized, please unmute your microphone. Please state your name, address, and relationship to the city. Please speak clearly and pause frequently, and please limit your comments to five minutes, and please remute your microphone when you're done. Um, and I'm not seeing any uh, indication that there's a desire to speak tonight. Okay. All right, thank you. Well, with that, we will close the public comment and we will move into the deliberations then. And again, anytime um, comments can be emailed at any time to city council at iskwawa.gov. All right, so um, now I think it would be very helpful if we go through the items in order. So the one through five items and then definitely looking also for council's thoughts on the um, future items uh, piece as well. Um, so the first one, is the um, amend amendments to the agenda setting section of the rules of procedure. So this is the one where we do have several options from different cities about how they have done this um, and many potential options for how we might change our rules of procedure. We do currently have rules of procedure on how to do this. Um, and so this would be a potential change that we would make. Any council members wishing to start us off? Council member Walsh. Thanks. So I think this comes up because while we have a procedure of, you know, call around, find two people that agree with you and then present it to the administration, that just obviously isn't working for us very well because it's underutilized and at the meeting we expressed frustration um, over the process. So I'm glad that we're looking at a solution. Um, I, I mean, I like the idea of a form, but I get concerned that that basically becomes one person presenting an idea and it requires staff work um, and it requires creating a process and going through it. I think I, I think the easier system to trial out and see whether or not it works for us is suggestion number two where we have a standing agenda section where we talk about future items and where somebody can bring something up. And if there's interest from other council members or community members, then that becomes enough interest to warrant um, uh, staff time. So I think that would be my preference. Thank you, council member Walsh. Um, do I understand correctly then that that is like the Evanston, um, what was described happening in Evanston? Okay, thank you. Um, Council Member Hall. Uh, thank you, Council President. This is Council Member Hall. Uh, I do have um, some thoughts, um, you know, back um, when we had our retreat, I was thinking to, you know, how how, what's the best way to go about doing this? What are the steps? What are the questions we should be asking ourselves? Um, and then one late night, I went back to reading um, the Association of Washington Cities, like new council member orientation manual and was rem reminded of the styles of government at the city level. So one thing I'd just like us to be mindful of too, while we have this conversation, and I think it's a good conversation to have, is that you know we follow a mayor city council form of government where by design the mayor's responsibility is to kind of set a vision for the city and propose policies that are in line with that vision and then the city council's responsibility I'm saying this with just one year under my belt too um is responsibility is to make sure that that vision you know is in line with what the community's priorities are right um so I guess you know, just making sure we're all mindful of that. At least that's how I'm seeing it too. And if anyone else sees it differently, I think this would be a good space to have that conversation too. Um, I like 
the path that the ad hoc committee, the Title 18 ad hoc committee did actually a few weeks ago where there were kind of a list of guiding questions to answer to answer as a council if we wanted to consider something independently. Um, and I wrote down a couple of questions that we could be asking ourselves if we did it at like a good of the order, like this suggestion number two, like um, what problem is this policy proposal trying to solve? Um, why now is the issue time sensitive? Are there any consequences to delay? I saw that question pop up in a couple of the forums too that I thought that was an interesting one. Um, how did this how did this issue come to your attention? Uh, was it through community engagement? Was it through regional partnerships, et cetera, et cetera? Um, and then, you know, are there city resources available to respond and support this request? So I actually kind of think um, whatever we do, um, we should kind of have a set of guiding questions that help get us to either, yeah, we should amend our work plan and put this on here because it's timely and it's important, um, or maybe it's not timely and important, so we put it off to the side, or maybe there's a third road that, yeah, this is important, but let's do it do it later. So those are my initial thoughts. Thank you, Councilmember Hall. Um, so I I am summarizing that, I think, as it's uh, similar to the Evanston model, but with guiding questions. Is that correct? Okay. Yep, um, that sounds right. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Goodman. Uh, thank you. Council President Hunt. So uh, Council Member Goodman here. So I may have missed this and I apologize. So I have a question before I have my comment. So with uh, item number one with the forms that came, what specific problem are we trying to solve? Um, so we did, uh, we had some discussion um, and I'll let city administrator um, Bob Quetz also summarized this from the administration's perspective and I'll say from my perspective um, there was a lot so there were concerns identified at the retreat and some of those concerns were around um, ambiguity of AB developments and um, one aspect of that seems to be uh, ambiguity around how council um, puts forward a, a potential agenda bill for adoption and looking at that part of our rules of procedure. So the problem we're trying to solve is ambiguity of AB development and in particular this part of our rules of procedure, which already we do have, as I, I had mentioned, we do have a section of our rules of procedure that um, gets at this, but it seems that there is concern around that. And I definitely also share that concern that we could be able to do this in a more straightforward way. And City Administrator Bob Quitz, would you just like to add or maybe um, maybe also summarize uh, a bit about the Evanston um, model since that has come up a few times? Um, uh, I don't, so I don't, well, I talked to Wally about it briefly, um, the Evanston model. So I don't, I don't need to go into that unless there's something specific to my question that he wants to answer. Um, I don't want to, I realize that I missed the first 15 minutes, so I'm trying not to take up too much time. I'm still a little bit, I'm st I still don't understand. So I know we use the word ambiguity a lot, and I'm trying to figure out what specific problem are we trying to solve? Because we do have specific processes, they are laid out. And as Council Member Walsh said, we do have the, we do have specific processes about how you, you know, that you get other council members so that we're not having seven different people trying to get the, the administration to do seven different things all the time, like, you know, missiles shooting around. So um, that is a process and um, it does work because we've used it. I've used it a lot with Council Member Ray and Council President Hunt and with other people during my 10 years. So I guess I would need some examples to find, figure out. I just don't understand what's what specific problem we're trying to solve. So, um, so I would be happy to hear examples of why something didn't work. I realize we have to call people these days and not meet in person usually, but that's, we still have phones. So I don't know why getting to other people doesn't work. Um, but I think I already alluded to what my concern is. Uh, my concern is um, similar to what 
Council Member Walsh said, and that is, I, you know, I'm concerned about a form that we could fill out and just one person sets the administration down a path of doing a bunch of work. Um, so if I missed part of that um, and I see someone shaking their head, but when I read, when I looked at the forms, it looked like that was maybe a potential. So that would be my, my concern. But I'm still interested in some examples about how our process that we have now isn't, isn't working. What, what specific problem? Thanks. This is Council President Hunt. Um, so I, I'm not familiar with all of the cities that are in the list, but I will say on the CTAC one, for example, which is one of the forms, they vote on it. So they have the form, it's part of the packet that goes with council that evening, and then they um, have the council member provides information about their request, and then the staff provides information about how much time it would take, and then the council votes on it. So you on, votes on the development of the AD that would return to council. So you would need to have, at that time, four council members who indicate at least a desire to speak to the bill. And I think, um, from my perspective, those sorts of options are the ones that would make the most sense um and from my perspective i don't i don't think that the process that's in i think it is like i've said we do have a process but i think there's potential for trying something different um that might work better might be more straightforward and i think some of these options do provide more um transparency for one thing like the the form based ones you have that information with the packet and then council votes on it. Um, so that's an interesting way to do it. And then I think as long as we have the information provided ahead of time, the Evanston type um, good of the order or standing section could also do those sorts of, could also provide that. So it's looking at other ways of doing the, this that might be more straightforward, might, in my opinion, has some other benefits as well. Okay, I'm still, I'm, again, I'm still looking at some examples of, some examples of what was ambiguous that didn't, why something didn't work because it was ambiguous and what was not straightforward and why we need to fix it. But anyway, that's, those are my comments from now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so now we have Councilmember D. Michelle. Thank you. <clears throat> this is Councilmember D. Michelle. Um, I looked at the forms and uh, I think one of the advantages of the form is that uh, council member prepares that and then uh, we could put that in the packet and everybody can read it ahead of time and come prepared and and know what where that council member is coming from. And then as you suggested, uh, then under good of the order, we could decide whether we've got a consensus that it needs to move forward or not. Uh, what I didn't like about the CTAC questionnaire, it looked like uh, you needed to prepare sort of a term paper <laughs> to, to. I mean, that, I was looking through the questions like, oh my gosh, how long does this take to put one of these together? Uh, I really like the questions that Council Member Hall and, you know, the, the Title 18 group came up with is uh, a more of a high level discussion uh, maybe we could prepare like a letter of intent or I don't know, a, a memo or something answering those five questions and submit it. But I, I do think that the form gives us a lot more transparency because we would need to submit it early. It would go in the packet. It would be available to the public. It would be available to all of us. We'd have time to think it over. Um, as a new person on the council, um, uh, the me, the calling of two other council members and getting that kind of permission, I think, was it's not transparent in my mind. It it um, it it certainly seems that we could do it in a lot more open way. So, I would I would like the idea of a form. I did not like the CTAC form. I would like something that's much more of a discussion than a checkoff list and so forth. Uh, but, uh, and then I, I do like the idea of bringing it under good of the order. And uh, if there isn't a consensus from a majority of the council that it moves forward, then we don't do it. And because uh, I don't think we can be chasing 
ideas from seven different council members uh, without some indication that it's going to go somewhere. Um, otherwise, got staff doing a lot of work that never ends up achieving anything. So those are my comments. Thank you. OK, um, Council Deputy President Ray. Thank you, Council President Ray, or Council President Hunt. Wow, Freudian there. Um, this is Chris Ray. I was getting ahead of myself. Um, I'm, I'm kind of aligned very closely with uh, Councilmember D. Michelle. I like the idea of a form. I don't like the CTAC form. It's a bit um, verbose for me, but I do like um, using a form to capture what Councilmember Hall talked about, which is what are the critical factors that we need to consider when making a determination. Um, I also think that if you link the form with a process that says the council makes a, a collective determination on whether to move forward, then you can have one person who has a, an interesting idea, um, but it takes a, uh, a majority of people to say we're going to move forward with this. And I also like the transparency of it. I like that, you know, instead of three people kind of getting together and saying, you know, I want to do, um, uh, I don't know, baby bumpers on uh, Front Street, um, you know, and and pushing it forward, um, it really does get to see the light of day before we start to invest staff time in in developing the, the path forward. So, um, so in my summary is I like the form. I like the transparency of, of uh, council taking some formal action on moving forward. And um, and I think that council member D. Michelle said everything else just perfectly. So that's all I have to say about that. Thanks, council, uh, council member Mertz. Thank you, council president. Uh, like council member Goodman, I'm not sure I understand what the problem is that we're trying to solve. I suspect people are sort of beating around the bush on what it is that bugs them, but I can't read it. So uh, I'll just say a couple of points uh, respectfully uh, to my fellow council member. When I hear someone say the mayor sets the vision for the community, uh, no, the community sets the vision for the community. Our job is to unearth that. And then the our job is to fund it as appropriate. And the administration's job is to execute it. And uh, that's the joy of being in uh, a strong mayor uh, form of government. Um, guiding questions around what we should be doing? Yeah, we have it. It's called a city strategic plan. And I love it. Um, so on this particular question in front of us, um, I'm, I'm a little bit of a mixed mind. Um, we're lucky enough to have a surplus of equanimity on this council and hooray for that. Um, but I'm always wondering how a system would work if we had one or two folks that had a really different point of view um, than the rest of the body. And we certainly all have our, our points of view, but we don't have anybody who's just fundamentally like, you're all going in the wrong direction. And the community is allowed to elect people like that. And if you had that, I'm not sure which of these systems would work well or not work well. Um, so that's why I'm a little hesitant to change things that have, that have, um, to my mind, generally worked well. But I also do, I mean, I agree that uh, I like discussing things in public. Uh, apart from the obvious transparency piece, I like hearing what other council members have to say. I. I'm not sure on a given issue if I want to show up and say, this is the problem and this is what we should do, right? It, I think it could be beneficial to say, this is the problem. And, you know, I think we as a group should discuss it um, and getting a second and then moving forward um, seems to be a way to engage um, the other six of you uh, in a public way. So if we were to do something, if we were to solve this problem, but again, I don't know what the problem is, I would be more inclined around this city of Evanston model than the city of SeaTac one. I think the form has the potential, again, if you had uh, one or two council members that had a differing way of looking at things, I think it would become kind of a bit of a slog, right? But if we all just get together and talk about things and then I find out, you know, if I come with an issue and it turns out the other six of you don't have a problem with it, well, then I guess it's just me. So uh, not sure there's a problem, but if, if we did want to do something, I would be more inclined for the city of Evanston future items model. Thank you. Okay. 
Thank you. And I think everybody has, um, I think all of the council members, oops, I sent that. Um, I think all of the council members have uh, weighed in, so I will make my comments at this time. Um, I, I think that this is that there are better ways to do uh, this process than what we have currently, which is why I think it's good to look at the process that we have currently. I, I agree that I don't think there is a lack of the ability right now for council to put forward an agenda item. We do have a procedure. It, it, it does get used. I don't think that that's the, the problem. I mean, that's not the problem. Um, but I do think there are, are better potentially better ways that we could try to do this. So I think that um, it sounds like from my fellow council members, there's interest in, in a sort of um, standing item at which time council would have a discussion, um, potentially put information forward about what they wanted to achieve and then ultimately vote on the item. Um, so I, I also thought that that has a couple of advantages that sort of model which would be something like the the what is used in evanston um i think it is more consistent and more transparent also currently if you have three council members who get together and put together something um you don't know that a majority of the council would even want to consider that so this also potentially makes sure that things that you at least have a majority of the council that wants to at least consider the bill before doing staff time on the agenda bill which i think is helpful it also gives council more um, opportunity to comment earlier in that process or to raise questions that they might have earlier in the process, which I think is helpful. Um, and then um, the other thing, if we did go with something like the, as long as you're providing information ahead of time, it also gives the administration um, the opportunity to provide information about how much staff time, et cetera, it would be, um, the other concerns that have been raised around delaying um, other things and that could all be factored into council's decision of voting on whether or not to continue with an item. Um, so I think that that's a more straightforward process than what we have now. It's more transparent and it seems like something that we should try to do um, from my perspective. Uh, and then let's see, so we have council member Goodman has a question and comment. Um, thank you. So I guess it's more of a comment. My request would be if when this comes back um, that we specifically identify what ambiguity it solves, it solves whatever the proposals are. Um, and I have also heard now that it also makes the process better which was not proposed in the materials tonight, it was to solve an ambiguity. So certainly there, I can't imagine people opposing the idea that we can do things better. Certainly I don't oppose that, but I would wanna know specifically why it's better, how it's better, um, because just, I'm, I am, um, I think my concern is similar to council member Martz in that uh, where it seems like we are struggling to, I certainly am struggling to understand why we're trying to make so hard to make things be different and maybe better um, and that we may be beating around the bush. So I would like some specificity about what we're trying to accomplish. Thanks. And why? Council Deputy President Ray. I want to rewind a little bit to the origin of of the things that are on tonight's agenda, and it really came out of our January 30th retreat. And one of the things that we heard during the retreat was, "I don't know how to get something on the agenda." That was what that's what I heard from people saying, "You know, I I don't know how to do that," and saying, "Well, you get two other people to go with you, and then you take it to the administration, and then you know." then something happens. So there, there is some ambiguity about how it goes about. And, and I, I heard that on the 30th, and, and I don't know if anybody else did, but I heard that. And so what this is, is an attempt to say, let's, let's put a little more structure around the process, you know, be it um, something like the Evanston model, be it something like the SeaTac model, be it like a hybrid model, but something that's a little bit clearer, a little bit more straightforward. So everyone can say, yep, that's exactly how we do it. I've seen it happen, and I know how to do it. 
Um, and, and that's where I think the question around ambiguity is. I don't think that's like, oh, I just hated it when so-and-so did this bill and they snuck it in there and, and you know, it was horrible. I don't think there's anything um, um, that's not being said. I think that there's a complete lack of uh, understanding or and I've never seen it happen, so I don't know how it works kind of discussion going on. So that's my recollection. And that's why I think that, you know, trying to address this problem, because I think there, if some, if I have two or three members say, I don't know exactly how this works, then I think that's a problem. And I think that's something we should talk about. Thanks. Does anybody else have any more comments on this one? And then I will attempt to summarize what I, the majority um, direction from this. Okay, not seeing any other comments. So I do think there was um, a majority of council members interested in trying a standing agenda item where a council member or up to three, because we can work in up to threes, um, would have an item that would be put forward for a vote of the council. And then um, depending on that vote, that that item would proceed um, to an AB or not. Uh, so I think that, that there was an interest in that. There was not an interest in having a very detailed form at all. Um, and so maybe either either some a process where there's a little bit of structure, um, but nothing overbearing um, um, would be good. And I think the um, I think there's an interest in having information that is provided with the packet, but again, not um, not a very detailed form. More um, something along the lines of a few guiding information about how this um, why this is necessary and that sort of information for council consideration. Um, and then there is a question that when this comes back to council that there be more um, information provided about why about the why. Any council members have any um, additional comments or uh, questions on this one before we go to number two? Not seeing anything. Okay, so I do think um, there was a at least a okay. See, Mr. Bob Quitz. Thank you, Council President. Just some clarity from the expectation of staff. Are you asking the staff to draft this? Is council leadership going to draft this? What's your pleasure? Um, from my perspective, I, I think we do have uh, an indication that there would be an AB that would come out of this that would change our rules of procedure. So I would like that to be something that staff um, looks into how we change our rules of procedure to address that. All right, thank you. Okay, great, thank you. All right, okay, so that was that item. Then for the second item, we have um, another, uh, so, some more suggestions on improving clarity of process. Um, and there are, the suggestion is really around having a council member liaison as council member Mart spoke to earlier, this was something that was, uh, previously worked out, but then um, is not currently on very many of our agenda bills. Oftentimes the liaison is not on there. Um, and so this would potentially reduce ambiguity if we have somebody and hopefully would reduce those head scratcher moments as Councilmember Martz was speaking to earlier. Um, does anybody have any additional or if anybody um, either likes that suggestion and has reasons why, or doesn't like that suggestion and has a different suggestion um, or any other comments, please indicate. Okay, Council Member Walsh. Thanks, so I've mostly been here in the post um, committee period. I experienced the committees for a very short period of time. Um, and while I have seen head scratcher moments, from my perspective, most of those happen because the council was presented with an AB from the administration um, without it going through the right set of questions or without it coming to us for 
brainstorming before writing the bill. Um, so things moving along the path too quickly. From my perspective, I'm not sure I understand or see the benefit of having a council member as liaison to stop that from happening. I feel like the better way to address that is to make sure that ideas come to us first as a brainstorm rather than coming fully baked. Um, and I feel like that answers the questions there, but I'm open to hearing otherwise. Okay, thank you. So Council Member Walsh, I think that's more along the lines of number three, which is more suggestions on uh, expectations for study sessions. Okay, um, Council Member Martz. So earlier I said that if people see a problem, they should speak plainly and I will follow my own advice and say that in that seven hour and 45 minute council meeting, we were presented with a bill that none of the seven of us had had anything to do with. Um, it had come from the administration and hadn't had any engagement. It wasn't, it wasn't from our current mayor, um, but, uh, you know, most bills come from the administration. And if we, and if we say that uh, there should be, you know, if a bill comes from the council, it should have a certain level of support. There's a corollary that says that if a bill is coming from the administration, at least somebody on council should know that it's coming and have some engagement in it. Um, you know, I miss committees. I liked committees. I wish we had committees still. Um, this is a teeny tiny little version of something like that. Um, I would suggest this come back. And uh, the mayor wrote a great definition of what a liaison uh, role could look like on November 26th. Uh, 2018, and I would revisit that definition and bring it back for discussion, would be my suggestion. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Martz. Do we have any additional comments? A uh, question from Councilmember D. Michelle, and then we do have comments. Um. So if it's appropriate, I'd like to ask Councilmember Martz a question, if that's all right. Um, so uh, like Councilmember Walsh, I have not been here at all for committees, although I observed them as a citizen at one point. And so I guess my question here is, uh, as each, as members were assigned as a liaison to a bill, would that be related to the regional committees we're on? Would that be related, or would it just be a, a random? You know, how did that work when we had committees? Well, um, to answer that, I, it, the, they were un, they were sort of unrelated. If something came out of committee, I think it was assumed that uh, whoever was the chair of the committee would speak to it, and I think that was that was kind of a little different than the liaison. That was just you know, you would report on your bills out of committee as part of chairing a committee, right? As part of the leadership role. Um, if we had a liaison, I would have confidence that my council leadership in uh, association with the mayor and the city administrator could figure out who the point uh, liaison person could be and contact that person. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Goodman. Uh, thank you, Councilmember Goodman here. So um, I was here when the liaison, when we had liaisons and um, the committees, and I felt that the, or my perspective was that the liaison was just, um, I'm not sure it was ever fully developed. And uh, so I would, would like to know exactly what role the liaison would play because if it's just having the name at the top of the page, I don't know what how, what that accomplishes. If the liaison is supposed to be a point person or um, at one point it was talked about, that would be the person who would be the council member most knowledgeable on that subject, um, whether you're the committee chair or whether you're not a committee chair and it's just something you felt passionate about. Um, but I could see having liaisons and it not working because the names at the top of the agenda bill, but all the questions just end up going to the administration. So I'm not sure how that would work. So I would like to know specifically what the role would be and how it would operate. Um, and maybe there, I mean, we could try it, but in my 10 years, um, it ends up to be a very not, um, 
it would not be handled the same by everybody. So it would have to be very, very, very clearly, the role would have to be clearly delineated. And then there would be, then people would have to be, for lack of a better description, held accountable. Um, otherwise, you've just got to name it at the top of the bill and some people work really hard and other liaisons for whatever reason, whether it's a light bill or whatever, it just, I just see issues with it, but I'm happy to um, learn more about it. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Um, and this is Council President Hunt. I think that uh, from my perspective, I agree. I think we didn't have, at least in my time on council, we didn't have a time where we were consistently always having a liaison and always um, having that person have a, a role. I think we, because we moved to committees and I mean, we moved from committees to study sessions and, and currently we have liaison listed on the agenda bills, but it's not usually filled in. So um, I, I can understand needing to have more clarity around the role, um, but I also <clears throat> do think it might help us with uh, avoiding some head scratcher moments if we can do it correctly um, or if we can do it well. Uh, so then let's see, Deputy Council President Ray. Oh, sorry, never mind. Um, not seeing any other comments on this one. Councilmember Hall. Uh, thank you. This is Councilmember Hall. I'm sorry. I guess I'm just not following on this one. I still don't understand how a liaison would help prevent head scratching moments. So maybe someone that feels like they have a really good grasp on that could explain that a little differently. I'm just not grasping it. Councilmember Martz. So I'll go back to this child site bill, right? It was a bill to uh, basically have a, it wasn't even an ordinance. It was, I believe, a resolution opposing the placement of CHEL sites in the city of Issaquah. Nobody was looking to place CHEL sites in the city of Issaquah, but there was a movement afoot amongst mayors in uh, parts of King County to preemptively make sure that there were no CHEL sites that would ever be placed anywhere outside of perhaps Seattle. Uh, we, the council, had not discussed CHEL sites. We had not discussed uh, heroin injection. We hadn't discussed the public health around the issues that CHEL sites were to address. Um, and the bill um, was a surprise. Um, it certainly reflected some uh, concerns in the community about things that were going on, but it was, uh, it was not ready to be discussed. And it also brought out uh, an immense response in the community, uh, both for and against, passionately at a time when there was zero chance that there was ever going to be a CHEL site put in the city of Issaquah. So if there had been some level of communication at the council, um, if the administration had had to go out to the council, they probably would have gotten seven people going, we don't know much about this. And that would have been educational in, it, in itself, right? So, uh, you know, and it's a different administration, it's a different mayor, it's a different city administrator, several times over. Um, so, but at the same time, uh, and there was another bill, just to give a second example, and I wish I could remember exactly which bill it was, but there was a bill where somebody came to me like an hour before the uh, issue, and I think it was, oh boy, I can't even remember. Um, but uh, somebody said, oh, um, I think it's a good idea, but we need to have an amendment, right? So I wrote up an amendment, and I handed it to the clerk's office, and I said, I'm going to make this motion um, during the bill today. and because somebody, you know, another council member is interested in hearing this played out, you know, or discussed as a, as a group. But I felt a certain sense of uh, responsibility to um, help address it because this person had come forward with this concern. And I think if we see a bill, you know, stuff does happen on the day of, right? We've all seen uh, conversations that go on. And I think there's a value to having somebody on the council side, that could be a point person. You know, not if if you have concerns, not not necessarily to you know, I'll get behind it or whatever, because that's not the idea. 
but to have a point person that you can ask questions of and that people might look to for potential amendments or you know uh, ways to help resolve the issue beyond just information from the administration. So I hope that's helpful. Thanks. Thank you. And um, City Administrator Bob Quitz would also like to comment. Yes, thank you, Council President, members of the Council. Uh, you know, I think the Council leadership plays a really uh, good role with a lot of this. Uh, I came from a community where there was no function like that. Uh, and so keeping the Council abreast of surprises was a, was a full-time job. It's less of a full-time job here, quite honestly, because of the review that the agenda gets every week. So, um, you know, there, in my sense, there's no right or wrong answer here. Uh, you know, you always want to minimize surprises to the greatest extent possible. Uh, I think you've got some good systems in place to do that. Uh, now, um, I think there's a commitment uh, to, from all of you with the city clerk to share amendments that may come along. I mean, over the course of a year and a half, uh, I, I regularly have seen that. Uh, but again, I, my, my experience has been that the council leadership does an excellent job. Uh, you all others rotate into those meetings every few weeks. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of lead up pretty much to everything and, you know, certainly you can have rules about anything you want to have rules about, but I think you've got some really good current processes that, that, that serve you in this particular area. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Goodman? Thank you, Councilmember Goodman here. So for the Chell site um, example, um, remember it well, and I think the problem with that was that, um, not a liaison problem. It was a uh, despite concerns went forward anyway problem. Um, and so I'm not sure. So it seems I'm not sure how a liaison solves that. Uh, leadership knew about it um, and uh, it was um, knew it was coming. Um, and, and then there's also a third person in that meeting. So that person knew it was coming. And I distinctly recall again, despite concerns, it came forward anyway. So it seems to me that the rules of procedure should maybe to solve that problem, the addition should be uh, uh, strongly caution the administration to bring forward <laughs> agenda bills that uh, do not have clearly, <laughs> do not have support. Um, that, I don't think that liaison solves that issue. So um, the um, other examples about having somebody be a point person on day of, um, I would be interested to know, learn more about how a liaison person would help with that because whoever that liaison is can only talk to two other council members on the day of the meeting. And if they've talked to anybody else about that ad agenda bill, then uh, the number that you are allowed to talk to is reduced by the number you've already talked to. So um, anyway, I'll be interested to learn more about how a liaison would resolve the whatever problems we're having. Thank you. Okay. Did anybody else like to make a comment on this one? I'm not seeing anyone. Um, so on this one, I think we, in summary, I think we have interest in some sort of rule change that makes sure there is some level of support um, for agenda bills, similar to what we considered on the council, um, council putting forward ABs, having a level of support. Um, that this would be sort of the other piece of that if there's an administration, um, something coming from the administration, which almost all of our agenda bills are coming from the administration, that there would be some level of support. Uh, I, I think um, in my mind, the liaison was that if you didn't have a liaison, that's indica indicative that there is no council person that is, um, comfortable enough to serve as the liaison for that bill. So that's the in, in indication that there is not that support. Um, so that's what how I was thinking of it, but I agree that there could be other ways um, to make sure we have that support. That council, uh, any council members want to help better formulate what we might do as far as rules of procedure on this one? 
Councilmember Walsh. I think that's very much right. relates to number three. Okay. Um, and sorry, I missed Deputy Council President Ray. No. Yeah. That's right. It was a really a tie. Um, thank you, Council President. This is Chris Ray. I, I think um, for the next step, I would like to see very much the definition that was um, put together that Council Martz, uh, Council Member Martz alluded to, because that might be, there was some thought and some rationale behind putting that together. And I'd like to understand that. So maybe we can um, circulate that to the Council and then make a determination of how to move forward. Okay. I don't think there's any objection to that. Definitely that seems like it would be useful information. Um, and then I think I agree with Councilmember Walsh. I think we can also go to the next one and see if we have a reduction in ambiguity coming out of the, the third um, section on our AB and then um, maybe go from there. I am not seeing anyone else. So I don't think we have a, a strong direction from council on this item, but we'll move to number three. Um, okay, so number three is regarding expectation setting for an a, as an AB is developed and the check-in times with study sessions um, and if this should be put into our rules of procedure around those expectations. Uh, and then also the summarization by the chair at the end of the item and if we should put that into our rules of procedure to sort of make sure that we always do it. Um, and I see uh, Councilmember Walsh, did you want to start with this one since? Sure, sure. strong support. I like the idea. <laughs> um, I, I think this concept was trialed out by our mayor with the intention of moving forward on it before COVID and then COVID happened. And so I just like to have something enshrined that really um, works that as a process to make sure that ideas come to us. We have that set of that expectation meeting before staff goes out and writes the bill. Um, and then that also guarantees that there's at least some level of support expressed at that meeting before it comes back for a vote, um, which I think is a good process. Okay, thank you, Councilmember Walsh. So that is mostly referring to the first suggestion in number three, which was city council should have one touch to set expectations before the AB is developed and one touch with the AB at a predefined check-in period um, per city council direction and to put that into our rules of procedure so that it's that it's clear. Um, okay, Councilmember Goodman. I'm sorry, we're on, are we on number, the other items? Uh, we're on th number three, so it's on page seven of 22. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, never mind, sorry. Okay, um, Councilmember Martz. Uh, thank you, Council President. <clears throat> so, this would basically create a minimum two touch setup, right? So I would like to suggest that the way that the Sound Cities Public Issues Committee handles things is they have uh, an emergency clause where it requires a supermajority. So um, I would like to suggest the possibility that we have something similar that requires like five members such that if we had something that absolutely was so timely that it needed to be addressed immediately. There's things that are beyond the mayor's purview financially, but that aren't necessarily covered by the city's emergency management clause um, that could be, that could require one touches, and in which case it would, it might be good to have a mechanism to accomplish that. Thank, Thank you, you Councilmember Martz. Um, I, do, I uh, this is Council President Hunt, and so I, I wrote this, um, and it's not very clear, but I was imagining that if you had City Council say on an AB, and maybe also just a very simple topic, something smaller that we all thought was non, um, not controversial, that we didn't feel needed a second touch, that that could be, that that could go directly. So I think having a predefined check-in period or, or not, um, definitely. I think that was part of the intent, but it's definitely also not clear from what I wrote. 
Council Member De Michelle. Uh, thanks. I'll be really brief. I yeah, I, I like all of these ideas. I especially like the idea of the questions being formulated so that we know exactly what we're, you know, administration has defined exactly what they need from us. Uh, sometimes we get those, sometimes they're very good, sometimes we don't. And, uh, you know, I, I really like the idea that we are responding to an exact question. Um, and the summary at the end, I think, is excellent, and I would like to see that in the rules. I have really appreciated uh, the council president summarizing at the end of these sessions. So I'd like all of us to do it, and I would try to remember myself to do that. So, so uh, yes, I support. I would support everything that's in uh, number three. Okay, thank you, um, Councilmember Goodman. Um, thank you. The second suggestion. Um, in number three, um, absolutely agree that the study session items should have questions being asked of council. Um, and uh, it, for historical purposes, it was that they needed to be uh, policy questions. Um, and that's how we knew if it was appropriate for study sessions. Um, in terms of summarizing, um, absolutely summarizing um, is an excellent idea. The only thing that I uh, don't think that I is agree with, let me see, chair should summarize the majority response, is that it places the obligation on the chair. So um, we're trying to be at a study session, the chair's trying to run the meeting, and we have zero staff, and um, the I think it should be um, staff's responsibility to take down all of the comments and, and um, keep track of what uh, um, the council is saying and to summarize and then for the council to um, confirm that that's accurate. Um, it's just a lot for a chair to do. Um, and, and because we don't have any staff whatsoever, I think it, um, in, I wouldn't like to see it go in the rules that that's an obligation of the chair. I think it's an unreasonable expectation for um, what we do as council members. We don't have any staff. Um, but other, but other than that, I agree. It's just not. It's just who should do it. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Councilmember Goodman. Um, not seeing anyone else. This is Council President Hunt. I will say, uh, uh, so I heard support for the first item. I don't think I heard any um, concerns about the first suggestion under number three, and then the second one. Um, which is around the summarization at study sessions. One of the reasons why I thought um, having a summary, uh, and I was imagining that would be the council chair, but um, that could change. Uh, I think that that is important. I think when we were having committees, we would vote, and sometimes there would be a minority um, opinion coming out of that committee, but at the same time, you would have a vote and you would have the chair who would be able to speak to what the decision was coming out of that committee when it came to council. And so I think having having something like that where we're summarizing the direction is really useful because we don't have that same sort of structure and ability to, to actually vote on that item when we're in study sessions because we don't take votes in study sessions. So that's part of what um, I was thinking about when I was when I was thinking about this, just for some context. Um, I don't have a strong, I think if staff uh, were to do the summary, I, I think that could be, um, well, I don't know. I would let the administration speak to if that's something, but uh, I see there's also council members who also wanted to comment on this. Councilmember Goodman, did you have an additional comment or was that your earlier comment? Um, I think, yes, but I think we also have uh, City Administrator Bobkowitz and then Martz and then me. Oh, okay, I saw, I saw you and then City Administrator Bobkowitz, so okay. Um, City Administrator Bobkowitz. Uh, thank you, Council President. Um, as far as number three, the second bullet, um, you know, certainly staff can summarize and and have the leader of the, the study session and the full council confirm that that review. I don't think that's a big deal. Uh, I'm more concerned about the first bullet. I'm not quite sure how you operationalize that. Um, you know, is it every agenda bill that comes before uh, the council would have to have two visits at a study session? Is it 
larger issues. Um, I, I'm, I'm a little confused. Is, is there, are there specific examples uh, that haven't worked that would guide? Because if we're going to have to put this to language in the council's procedures, I'm just trying to figure out how we, because I don't think you intend every single agenda bill that comes before the council has two touches at a study session. I don't think that's the intent. I think it's uh, a certain category, and it would be helpful to have that, cat that category better defined. Thanks. Thank you, City Administrator Bobquitz. I'll speak to what I was thinking of, and then Council can uh, weigh in with with um, further thoughts and comments. I was thinking that uh, we would have, I think it is important here that there is the one touch to set expectations before the AB. I think there have been some agenda, um, some agenda bills where it comes forward as more in the agenda bill state. Um, and so I think that was the intent was to make sure that we have the one expectation setting um, type study session before we have an AB. I think we've gotten good, um, I've heard good feedback from council when we have had that earlier discussion. And then as far as requiring two touches, I didn't mean to write this as though we would be required to have two touches, but just that if council for some items, if council were to um, indicate that there would be a second uh, check-in period, that that would be something that might come out of a study session. So I agree uh, that I don't think everything needs two touches. And if I could follow up, council president. So it, for example, things that be on consent would not require this, but perhaps things on a regular agenda would. So things that are on consent that would go to a study session. Well, many so, things on consent don't go to study session. I right. guess that's my point. So, right. so this rule, as far as uh, this is AB, about, because their ABs go on consent and the regular agenda, and so I'm just trying to to parse through this. So the the idea would be it'd be those ABs that might be on a regular agenda would would have these touches, which is which is in essence, I think, the practice now, or at least the we strive for that to be the practice now. Um, this is Council President Hunt. Again, I'll speak for myself and then my fellow council members can weigh in. I think we do strive for that, but I've also um, heard concern, and I think there was also a lot of concern that I've heard um, at the retreat around the ambiguity of study sessions compared to what we had with committees. And so this would be um, trying to uh, trying to make that uniform um, and to, if as you said, if that's what the current intent is to just um, Put that into our potential rules of potentially put that into our rules of procedure uh and then this is only for referring to study sessions so um it's it's specific to things that would be going to a study session anyway i don't think there's any problem with things um on consent going directly to the consent calendar and i haven't heard concerns about that um okay I'm not seeing any comments. Oh, sorry, Councilmember Martz. Thank you. Oh, um, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, I would just reiterate that I, I, I sort of think we should generally say, yeah, on things that uh, are worth talking about, that we should probably have two touches, partially because we don't want to let the public know that there's going to be a conversation and they can hear the first part of it and they can come talk to us at the at, you know, at the actual place where we vote on a bill, um, but then have a clear mechanism for things that just require one touch that maybe you say, obviously things that are on the consent agenda, but some other mechanism where it's important that we talk about it because it's a pile of money or whatever. Um, I, I don't want to hamstring the administration when there's something that is urgent, um, but I think we should have a general policy of anything worth talking about is worth talking about twice. Uh, first time to get the general lay of the land, and second time uh, so that the public uh, feel strongly they have a chance to contribute to it. Because uh, the shocking truth is that a lot of the public doesn't read the uh, packet when it comes out on Fridays. Uh, they hear about things after we talk about them in council and have a chance to respond after. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Martz, and I apologize for um, missing your comment in the chat. Councilmember Goodman. Um, thank you, Councilmember Goodman here. Um, 
this isn't exactly earth shattering information, but, um, and I know uh, City Administrator Bob Quitz already said that um, having a staff member be responsible for uh, notes and summarizing isn't a big deal. Um, for every committee that we did have, a staff person was involved, was assigned and they attended the meetings and they took all the notes and wrote all the questions. And um, so uh, I think it's a, it, it's a reasonable idea that we have a staff member handle it. And I say that only for the council members who weren't around um, uh, for committees or very long for committees, that that's the way it was before. Um, and so that's part of the reason that um, my, my hope is that this doesn't become a, a study session um, chair responsibility. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Okay, now I don't see any further comments. Um, so I think from council on this one, I think if we can better clarify the first suggestion, which was around the one touch um, on an AB that would go to a study session before the AB is developed. So one, one uh, touch on something that ultimately is envisioned to be a regular business AB that would go to a study session before we're actually looking at an AB. I think that was, that was really my intent. Um, and then you would have the second touch either at when you have the AB or potentially a second study session if it's if it's that um, if that's necessary. So I think if I can clarify that um, wording, I think that council seems like seems like that would be beneficial um, for council. And then on the the summarization, um, I personally am. I think that having the staff do the summarization is personally. I think that that would be a fine way to do it. I would. Um, my preference, though, would be that it is at the meeting so that we can all make sure to um, say if we think we uh, have something to add or that we thought something wasn't um, quite in the summary the way we, we heard it. And then council could have a discussion if we needed to, but we would have it at that moment rather than, um, you know, having the notes come later, for example. So anybody have any corrections or additions to that as the summary for three? And Councilmember Hall, question. Uh, yeah, thank you. This is Councilmember Hall. Just a quick clarifying question. So would the idea be we have a study session, uh, give initial um, um, direction, set expectations, and then it could either come back as an agenda bill at a future study session or a um, like an informational update? during a regular meeting? Or are we talking about only having it come back to study sessions? This is Council Member Hunt. I, I envision this as that you would have a study session item that is, but we're not reading the AB in that study session. We set expectations for what the AB would become. And then depending on the complexity of the topic, it would either become an AB that we see at a regular meeting and we vote on, or it would come back to a study session for another touch at a study session. Oh, okay, so that would be an expectation that we would set at that initial study session, whether or not we want it to come back again, or if it's good to go to be put on an agenda for a regular meeting. Is that? Yes, and, okay. and additionally, I think there are the concerns that Council Member Martz mentions around there could potentially be something where it's clear that we need to act on it right away and there isn't. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's so it's, some, some additional factors there, but yes. Okay, so it's fair to say it's pretty much at the council's um, direction there. Uh, right, I think with the, with the caveats that, um, with the caveats that council member Martz talked about, um, and City Administrator Bob Quotes would like to make a comment. Well, uh, you know, I, I, th I think that this is all being done in a matter of collegiality and trying to move issues forward. I think, though, at the end of the day, that the mayor, if any mayor wishes to put an item on an agenda for any reason, a mayor can do that. 
So I, I think as, if this is the direction the council wants to go in, I think these are general direction items, but ultimately uh, uh, any mayor can place an item before the council. If the council's not happy, it votes it down. But uh, I, don't, I don't think that a mayor can be limited uh, by, these, by these rules that an item could not then be placed on an agenda in the future. It would just be, I think, in the nature of trying to get collaboration to get consensus moving forward. But there might be times where there isn't consensus. Thank you, City Administrator Bobquitz. I would just add that I think the other reason is to um, is to set some clear checkpoints for ABs because I think that that um, within the study session format, I think that hasn't that is one of the sources of AB process ambiguity that came out of our retreat discussions that we're trying to address here. Um, Councilmember Goodman has a comment. Uh, thank you, Council Member Goodman here. Um, the way it's written, Council should have one touch to set expectations before the agenda bill is developed. Um, it seems to me like we're going to be adding a lot of things to um, meetings. I'm not quite exactly sure how that's going to work. So I'll be looking for more information about that. And I'll wait for number four because a bullet under there. Uh, anyway, I I see similarities, um, but I'm just concerned about how many expectational agenda items are going to be coming to us before an AB is developed. So that's that's just my comment. Thanks. Thank you, Councilmember Goodman. Again, I think this is really trying to. Um, it's really trying to put into our our um, documentation what is what the administration is trying to do anyway. So these are it was meant to refer to things that were already going to study session, not to um, additional items, not to consent agenda items, for example. But I think, from my perspective, that was part of the intent of the study sessions was that council would have a, would have a touch with agenda bill topics before we see the agenda bill so i think that i think that that is a good expectation setting um but i see some I see that we may not all have that opinion um okay so on this one trying to summarize direction on this one i think that we do you want to have a summary of the, um, we do want to have a summary of the study session topics after each topic, whether that's staff or the chair. I um, I think I, we've heard it from at least one council member that they prefer it be staff, which I think would be fine. Um, and then on the uh, expectations around study session and AB development, I don't think we have a consensus, but um, I did hear, if I. I think I heard an interest in seeing a version of this that was more clear and that wouldn't add additional items to any sort of study session process. So not adding consent agenda items and not adding things that wouldn't normally go to a study session, but just being more clear on what council um, thinks the process would be. And again, also taking into consideration what city administrator Balquid said around um, the mayor's purview in this as well. So I think we can write up a different version of this, if that is, if that sounds okay to council. Okay, um, I'm not seeing any other comments. I will throw out at this moment just a, or a, a question, open ended, and I think if there are other suggestions for reducing the process ambiguity around ABs, um, please do let let us know because this was one of the, I think it was the number one item that came out of our retreat. And so we're trying to think of ways that we could address that. So if there are other suggestions for this, please do um, let me or Deputy Council President Ray know or we can continue to work on this. Um, so I'll move to number four at this point. I'm not seeing any other comments on this one. So um, this is around Another suggestion, which is um, when appropriate, if council were to 
wants to pose questions for boards or uh, commission consideration. Again, this was trying to, uh, mostly trying to put into our, to document what I think is already the best practice and which council already sometimes does. Um, but just to put that into, just to document that. Um, council Member Goodman. Thank you, Thank Council you. Member Goodman here. Um, so I will give you a specific example, um, but I but my high level um, comment is I think we have to be careful and mindful that uh, we don't put the cart before the horse. And what I mean by that is we're not um, sending um, that we're not. Um, well, let me give you the example and then you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, so I've heard from a couple of uh, different um, commission members um, on the EV charging ordinance uh, that they're, um, that they, that uh, PPC and um, the environmental um, committee heard that uh, they felt that it was the council already knew what it was going to do um, because of all of the very specific comments that um, were made at the prior, I think, two work sessions. Um, and so the comment was, I'm not sure it matters what we do because the council has already made up their mind. So my concern um, is, and those were exact words, and my concern is that, um, or my comment would be, if we kept um, our questions about something that was going to be for board and commission consideration at a high level, then I don't have any concerns. But when we are getting involved at, I think, at the point in the process that should be the board or commission's role, then I think that would, that's, that's, that's where, the, where my concern is. Um, and the reason it kind of, I made that comment before about number three and four together. Um, the reason I said that is because I'm not, number three, I would wanna make sure that, I'm not saying this very well at all, but my concern is that we don't get into a, that our process doesn't become, that we have so many, that we have our agenda bills coming for us, before us before they go out to the public process and we are weighing in and, uh, in such a way that signals to the community and signals to boards and commissions that we already know what we're going to do. Um, the EV charging code, when we were kind of vetting that before, before it went to boards and commissions, you know, we made comments, and I'm and I'm saying we because I, you know it doesn't matter who, um, and I don't even remember, but we did make comments like. I would support X, I think, I would support this, I would support that. To me, that is inappropriate before we send things to boards and commissions. I think if we want to submit questions to boards and commissions, um, it needs to be very high level. Otherwise, uh, we are, I think we are sort of short cutting the process. Boards and commissions are supposed to be an important part of the public process and we should be hearing what they want, that they hear the public wants before we make, um, before we say, before we make comments like that, that signals that we already know what we want to do. Um, so that's, that's my concern with four. Thanks. Um, okay, thank you. Council member Walsh. Thanks. Um, I agree with the concepts that council member Goodman was presenting. I don't want to um, suggest a solution to a border commission in creating that early conversation before it goes to them. But I do think it's important to be able to, if we can keep the questions at that high level, to be able to define for the board and commission what successful information coming out of that would be, what would 
answer our questions so that we don't have to punt something back because that never feels good. As somebody who was on a commission before, it doesn't feel good for um, a decision to be made or a recommendation to be made by the board and then have it come to council and council go, well, what about all 5, 10, 15 of these things and then reverse the decision? So I see this as a good way for council to be able to say, if we were talking about the EV thing to say, hey, I wanna know what kind of um, cost this is gonna look like. I wanna make sure that there's the chance to hear from these types of people and maybe I want to understand what we think the con unintended consequence or you know something i'm not preparing the ideas but i want to be able to ask those questions so that the board can feel like they are answering our questions that aren't just aren't necessarily taking it and steering it in a different direction that isn't going to never mind it's too late i'm not speaking clearly but I think I've probably gotten my half of my point across. Thank you, Councilmember Walsh. Um, Councilmember Martz. Thank you, Council President. This is Councilmember Martz. Yeah, I, I mean, I point well taken from Councilmember Goodman. I think that for the entirety of the last 11 plus years, uh, you know, I have looked to the expertise from commissions. Uh, and I think that maybe we do need to practice a little bit more hygiene about, uh, you know, when we decide we need more information. But boy, oh boy, every single year, there's been times where we said, oh, this needs to go back uh, because there's additional technical information. And those uh, commissions uh, will often, especially now that we no longer have committees or subcommittees, um, you know, they can dive in in a way that, that we can't. So I super value their input. I'm excited uh, about uh, maybe streamlining that a little better so that we can get the best input possible from those folks. Uh, we won't always do what they want, but I want to hear uh, their thoughts on a lot of these issues. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Martz. Councilmember Hall, and then we have Councilmember Goodman. Uh, thanks. This is Councilmember Hall. Um, uh, and just to add to this conversation, I think that that's an important one um, to make sure that our you know boards and commissions um, feel that they're being valued because the information that they provide is truly invaluable to our decision making. Um, but I also would hate for us to miss out on opportunities um, for specific policy questions or ideas to be flushed out and dove deeper into by boards and commissions based on our own lived experience or regional assignments about what's going on in the region. If What about this idea? What do we think of this? Let's make sure um, the commission uh, has a conversation about this. Because if they come back and say, that's a terrible idea for Issaquah and here's why, chunk it out, that would be very important information for me to want to hear when it comes back to a council meeting. So. I don't know. This is a tough one. Maybe there's a middle ground here. I'm not sure, though. Thanks, Councilmember Goodman. Uh, thank you, Councilmember Goodman here. So as I um, listened to uh, my fellow council members and um, doing some more thinking, um, I again come to the question of, you know, what problem are we trying to solve? And I'm not sure the problem is whether uh, whether the expectations of the council are getting to the boards and commissions um, in time so that they can consider that. I'm wondering if the issue that is that they are not getting, uh, that maybe we need um, more complete information before the boards and commissions. Um, and that's a different issue. Thank you. Thank you. Um, clarifying question for Council Member Goodman. So that would be a different issue, but that would also be a different, that wouldn't be a solution that would be in our rules of procedure, right? That would be a separate process, I imagine. Correct. It means improving, uh, 
improving what we present to boards and commissions. There have been a lot of times in my tenure where um, it, um, those the information that the boards and commissions received was um, not full and complete. Okay. Okay, I am not seeing any other comments on this. I think there is an interest in having a streamlined or documented process around um, around this further, although also uh, also interest in improving other aspects of the um, process that are not in the Council Rules of Procedure. But I, I think I heard that there was interest in um, working on a, a way to include in the rules of procedure around study sessions the some guidance as far as um, development of questions that would be given to committees so that they would then be able to provide that information back to council and be um, be that part of the decision making process. So if that's if that is a correct summary, then I think I'll. I'll give a minute in case anybody wants to add. And we have a comment, um, Councilmember, or, sorry, City Administrator Bob Quitz. Yes, thank you, Council President Hunt. So is it the intent that the staff takes a stab at this? Is the council leadership wish to do that? Because um, I, I, I think this is a hard one. Councilmember D. Michelle would like to comment. Yeah, um, I haven't said anything so far. I was on the Arts Commission for 12 years, and I don't remember the City Council ever asking us anything <laughs> that we had to respond to. So I haven't been participating because I know it's different for Policy Planning Commission and Development Commission and others. Um, you know, we when we talk about the, we were talking about equity and we were saying we we always involve our stakeholders in our deliberations. And I'm wondering if this is a good time to bring that principle forward and ask, possibly ask the chairs of those commissions how they would like to handle questions from the council, maybe get some feedback before we uh, start to formulate uh, a policy around this. Um, um, I, I think I would need more information. Are they going to feel that we're, um, you know, preempting their discussion if we ask a question or or, or I know if on the Arts Commission, I would have welcomed a question from the council. So I'd like to hear how they're feeling of, about that. And and if they welcome questions, how would they like those formulated? What's the process? Maybe just get some actual feedback from the people who are going to be at the other end of those questions. Okay, thank you. Um, Councilmember Hall, followed by Deputy Council President Ray. Uh, yeah, thanks. This is Councilmember Hall. I just wanted to say that's an excellent idea, and I think a really good takeaway from our equity training that we just had about you know how are we broadening the circle. I just wanted to suggest maybe um, you know to take it out of the staff's plate for now. We could have the Council President and Deputy Council President reach out to all the chairs of the boards and commissions and have that discussion, and maybe. Um, bring it back at the next session we have on this topic. Okay, thank you. Uh, Deputy Council President Ray. Um, I love uh, Councilmember D. Michelle's idea to engage with the uh, boards and commission chairs. I think that's that's just super spot on. Um, I was going to go a slightly different direction than uh, Councilmember Hall, but to the same end, which is we've gotten a lot of information, not on this topic, but on all four of the topics we've talked about. Um, I'd almost suggest that we contemplate an ad hoc who could just get together and take the information that we've gotten this evening and, and um, come back with some different points of view on how we might address it or if, if maybe some of these things shouldn't be codified within the rules of procedure. And I think we have some some members here who have some very different uh, um, counsel and life experiences that would be very valuable 
to um, get those different points of view. So as opposed to valuing it to leadership, who I also think have diverse views, but um, I, there's, a, there's, a, there's one thing that the council president and I have in common in its tenure. And I would like to see, um, you know, kind of a, a cross section of the members here with, um, you know, some medium tenure, some heavy t senior tenure and some less senior tenure. So it's just an idea for, for y'all to contemplate. Thank you. Okay, so we have a couple ways forward. I think I was seeing some uh, head nodding when Councilmember D. Michelle was suggesting that we reach out to committee um, committees on the uh, commissions and boards. Um, and so I think especially, um, I think that one especially seemed like there was interest from council members. Uh, if there's not, please indicate in the chat. <laughs> um, and then I think as far as how we do that, um, I I think I think we can probably figure that out, um, figure out a way to get that feedback back and then go forward from there and use that information to make a decision on this one. So I thought I think that was a good suggestion. I think I was seeing um, a positive response to it. Uh, I think and then um, we have one more uh, one more item and because council uh, council deputy president Ray's um, comment seems like it was more all more across multiple um, topics I think not specific to that one is that right okay so um, so then we'll I'll revisit that at the at the end um, but the last one if there's any thoughts on the last one the last one number five was really just around uh, clarifying the and ors um, I had in, the, in our rules of procedure, I had, I had mentioned before that when we looked at our rules of procedure about two and a half years ago, I think now we did identify that there were these and ors and that they were a source of ambiguity. And um, I think this is more just kind of a um, cleaning up or clarifying of those that we could do. So if there's any objection to that, please let me know. Not seeing any. Okay. Um, is there, do council members think that it would be good to have an ad hoc that would meet um, to discuss the rules of procedure changes on maybe the more complicated ones like uh, the study session ambiguity of process ones, which were three and four? Do council members, is there interest in, in going forward with the ad hoc on that? I see council member Walsh comment. I believe this is, that's the way that it was done last time and it seemed to work well. So I, I think it's a decent idea to flush through some of those concepts. Okay. One for a decent idea. Any other council members um, either interested in serving on ad hoc or, or thinking this is a good idea or not? Do you have any comments? Oh, cool. Oh, uh, Council Member Hall and potentially Council Member D. Michelle. Yeah. And I think uh, if Council Member D. Michelle wants to go first, I think she started talking right before I put my comment in, so I can <laughs> sorry. respect that. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I jumped, I jumped the gun. Sorry about that. Um, I think it's a great idea and uh, I'd be willing to serve, so I'll just throw my hat in the ring. Okay, great. Um, Council Member Hall. Yeah, all, all I was, oh, this is Council Member Hall. All I was going to add is I liked uh, the Deputy Council President's idea of trying to get a good cross section of experience um, in Council, too. So it sounds like uh, Council Member D. Michelle um, has selflessly offered herself up, and um, her and I are more than newbie Council Members. So I'll let her take that role on, unless other Council Members think differently about this cross section idea. Thank you, Council Member Hall. Um, I will just say that I think, uh, I also agree, I think it's a fine idea and I do think it's um, how it was basically done last time, although I think not not specifically with the tenure in mind. So um, I think that that is also, that would also be fine and maybe offline we can um, determine who the, who, uh, which council members want to um, serve on that if that seems fine to council this evening. Not seeing any, not seeing any other council members on this item. And then the last item is other items. Um, 
for future discussion. And as I mentioned, I, I was not planning on discussing these. We don't have any information prepared on any of those. I mostly wanted to make sure that we uh, were clear that we are tracking those and that we have them. Um, we haven't lost sight of them and they are on the radar. Um, they were not rules of procedure in my mind um, type questions, but they have been raised by council members and they were um, concerned, so I wanted to track them. If any council member has any comments on those, please indicate. I'm not seeing anyone on any comments, um, so I will I will say to council members can come forward with uh, further comments on those as well. Okay. Um, there is not. Is there any any additional comments? So just give one this evening. Council President? I think she's having audio. I think we lost her. Yep. Um, City Administrator Bob Quitz, you want to make a comment? Uh, just to confirm the expectation of staff that we're on hold pending the meeting of this ad hoc. Is that correct? On all uh, the matters discussed this evening? I think that is correct. And I think that the ad hoc might include staff too. All right. Well, you'll, you'll let me know. We will um, let you know. Uh, the council president has texted to say that her computer has shut down. So um, I think we're, count, Deputy Council President, it's all yours to take this home. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm boy, like bio, battlefield promotion there. Um, um, I think that that brings us to the end of the agenda. Is there any other uh, comments this evening? I see uh, Council Member Hall has a, a question. Uh, yeah, thank you, this is Council Member Hall. Uh, and just because um, you had mentioned um, that staff might be part of this ad hoc, and so I was thinking we might want to have a discussion on what that might look like. Because I didn't, I didn't. That wasn't my assumption going out of this meeting. So maybe um, if any other council members thought um, strongly about what kind of staffer would be a good addition to that ad hoc. Uh, uh, <laughs> Clerk Eggers, you have a. Comment? I just would add a uh, thing. Well, let me let me let me let me, let me jump in and, and simply say, you know, I'll, I'll I'll be happy to staff the ad hoc. I don't think I'll, we'll, staff is meant to be a member of the ad hoc. I think we we'll, we'll simply provide administrative support uh, for the ad hoc. That, that 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 I think is the role. And so I think between myself uh, and the clerk's office, we'll cover it. My this is Clerk Eggers. My only uh, comment to add would be that. Um, we would put together a simple agenda bill for you to take that action on what your ad hoc, what your ad hoc committee structure is and when you would expect it to return. Great. Thanks, Tina. For the, for the creation of the ad hoc, not regarding any of the business of the ad hoc, but the, Correct. for the council's rules, ironically, you need to now have an AB to do that. So we will, we'll, we'll, we'll draft that for you. All right. All right, I'm going to hand the gavel back to Council President Hunt. Thank you, Council Deputy President Ray, and I apologize, everyone. My computer restarted. Um, but I, I did want to just say thank you for the thoughtful conversation um, and following up on those retreat items. I really appreciate all of the feedback and for your thoughtful remarks this evening. It's definitely, um, I definitely think there will be some, some good, um, good items that come out of this. Thank you. Um, so there is no, um, there is no, uh, bit of the order on tonight's agenda. So that means the last item is adjournments and, um, I will at this time call for the adjournment of the meeting, but council members should stay on because we will have an executive session.
Council President, can we take a five minute break before we re reconvene uh, for the executive session? Or not? Can we take yes. longer than can we take longer than a five minute break, please? At least ten. All right. Ten minutes.